Girls, welcome back to ASEAN News and here are some of the latest updated news for you. Timor Leste celebrates its 47th proclamation of independence. Timor Leste commemorated its 47th anniversary of proclamation of the independence on 28th of November 2022, which took place in the municipality of Manatuto. Timor Leste's president, Jose Ramos Orta, on his remarks stated that we lowered the Portuguese flag as we wanted democracy in this country. <laughs> Hatun bandera portuguesa, hasa bandera RDTL. The Portuguese flag was lowered and we raised the national flag on November 28, 1975, even though at that moment we were all young. Why the Central Committee chosen the Democratic Republic, not only it's different from other world, but because we really wanted this country to be a democratic with law and justice, as well as with four sovereign power, the President of the Republic, the government, the national parliament, and the judiciary system or court. President of the Republic, Governo, Parlamento e da Maca Poder Judicial. The event is a way of reminder to the young generation of Timor Leste about the past history, in which 47 years ago, on 28th of November 1975, Timor Leste has proclaimed its independence. Since then, it has marked as an important date where Timor Leste was finally freed from the colonial rule. This year's theme for the celebration is Let's Unite and Continue to Fight for the Better Life of the People. Apart from the President of the Republic, the ceremony also attended by state officials, the Prime Minister, Timor Leste's President, Court of Appeal, Member of the Parliament, Ministries, foreign diplomats, war veterans, local authorities, as well as the public, who wish to witness the ceremony, since there will be general entertainment with free access after the ceremony concluded. About 628 war veterans awarded with Medal of Honor during the celebration by the President of the Republic, Jose Ramos Orta, based on the Presidential Decree No. 93, 2022, as per November 24. Ramazorta urges the government to eliminate poverty and fight malnourishment in Timor Leste. Jose Ramazorta, in his remark at the 47th anniversary celebration of the proclamation of independence in Manututu municipality, Horta urges the government of Timor Leste to put an absolute priority to eliminate the poverty and fight malnourishment in Timor Leste. As head of state, I am proud of what we have done for 20 years. We must do more and better, especially for all newborns and all mothers. It is an absolute priority and how to eliminate the poverty, fight the malnourishment issue in Timor-Leste. This is a challenge. I invite the government, parliament and all political parties to take part. Horta also added that, on November 28, 1975, Timor Leste's people unilaterally declared the independence because they want to establish the government system to protect people's freedom for economic, social, and inclusive system for everyone. Horta also stresses that, why the Central Committee chosen the Democratic Republic, not only it's different from two other words, but because we really wanted this country to be democratic with law and justice, as well as with four sovereign power, the President of the Republic, the government, the National Parliament, and the judiciary system, or court. About 628 war veterans awarded with Medal of Honor during the celebration by the President of the Republic, Jose Ramos Orta, based on the Presidential Decree No. 93, 2022, as per November 24. The President and the Prime Minister of Timor Leste launched the groundbreaking ceremony for the Five Star Hotel project. Timor Leste's President, Jose Ramos Orta, and the Prime Minister, Taur Matan Ruak, accompanied by the President of the Pelican Paradise Limited Group, Datuk Edward Ong, signs the plaque to launch the groundbreaking ceremony for the future construction of the five star Pelican Paradise Hotel in Tibar, Bazar City Administrative Post of the Likisa Municipality. Maybe Pelican Paradise uh, is 
is a testimony to the political stability of Timor-Leste. Political stability, predictability in the sense that we might have a different governance that measured initiatives of national interest. They start with by one government and continue by others. Other projects that again started with the previous government continue, like the ongoing infrastructure development of the country. There, can be, there cannot be a development without roads, and uh, major investment in road construction bridges around the country, and uh, uh, the, the rehabilitation, expansion, modernization of the Delhi uh, airport. Again, a government-funded project with a partnership with uh, IFC and the J Japanese uh, government. So we will have also soon, the next two, three years, a modern Delhi International Airport. So Timor Leste can very well be uh, an investor in the next few months to come in uh, energy investments in uh, Southeast Asia, in Asia can be investment, maybe investor in the new capital of Indonesia, in Kalimantan, uh, and uh, elsewhere in, uh, in Asia. So <clears throat> I have a, a full confidence uh, that Timor-Leste will, uh, will see its economy uh, uh, <clears throat> move faster in the next two, three, five years. The project will faster this project paves the way for quality tourism, that means tourism in Timor-Leste has great potential, many tourism from quality tourism to community tourism. We start with the quality tourism, which can also open doors to other investment. Investors must have confidence, we must open the door. Confident will return. The president of the Pelican Paradise Group Limited, Datuk Edward Ong, explained this tender has been running and will give the company time to be able to prepare and mobilize. Okay, the fiscal will be in April because they have to do the design. We will be closing our tender in December the 15th. Contractor now is asking for extension. Once it closes, we can take about four months for them to do a civil work and M&E design. And after that, we we'll start the construction. Oh, construction need about thousand minimum, thousand three years, three years, minimum about four hundred. We, we haven't estimated contract. We are waiting for contractor to come out, but we think it's around four hundred million. The investment proposal by the Malaysian International Company was initiated in 2008 during the reign of Timor Leste's fifth constitutional government, led by former Prime Minister Kairala Shanana Guzman. The project cost more than two hundred million dollars, and it will take three years for the completion. The design shown by the company has a total of 300 rooms, a convention center for 500 people, 10 villas, a restaurant with international features, 7 gardens, space for fitness, sky bridge and many more. Get the Verbung urged the Timor-Leste government to pay close attention to malnourishment issue in Timor-Leste. United Nations Assistant Secretary-General and Coordinator of Scaling Up Nutrition Movement, Gerda Verburg, asked the government of Timor-Leste to pay more attention to malnourishment issues in Timor-Leste because children under the age of five suffer from malnutrition. During her visit to Timor-Leste, she will talk about malnutrition food security in Timor-Leste. Her main focus is how to decrease the number of malnourishment issue in this country. It's a great honor to be here in East uh, Timor. Um, I would like to start with congratulating each and every one with the 47th anniversary of the proclamation um, of independence. Better nutrition because food security is focusing too much on the calories, on filling the uh, stomach, and is not enough focusing on the quality of the food that is important for um, building up the health of uh, starting with children, of course, but also the cognitive development, the brain development, and people's well-being. And the government of East Timor has decided to become one of the 65 member countries two years ago by an official letter of the prime minister. 
they said, we want to do to prioritize good nutrition uh, together with uh, food security and food systems. Please come and support us in bringing the right players together and make them work together at every municipality um, to end all forms of malnutrition by 2030. Based on the schedule, UN Assistant Secretary General and coordinator of the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement, Gerda Verbrug, will visit Timor Leste for three days. She will also meet with the Timor Leste's President, Jose Ramos Orta, the Prime Minister, Tarwatan Ruak, the President of the National Parliament, Anasetu Guterres, and she will also have a meeting with civil society and Timor Leste academics experts. The Indonesia search and rescue teams continue efforts search for earthquake victims. Search and rescue teams continue to effort to clear, debris and evacuate victims of the deadly earthquake that hit the Indonesian town of Cianjur. The chief of the country's National Disaster Mitigation Agency, Suharyanto, told reporters via an online call from the site that the death toll had risen to more than 300 and while 24 people remain missing. The quake was particularly deadly because it struck a densely populated area at a depth of just 10 km. Indonesia is one of the world's most earthquake-prone nations, regularly recording strong earthquakes offshore where fault lines run. China ready to work with ASEAN to build closer community with a shared future. Chinese top legislator Li Tsangshu said the National People's Congress, China's national legislature, stands ready to continue working with the ASEAN Interparliamentary Assembly and the parliaments of the ASEAN countries to make new contribution to building a closer China-ASEAN community with a shared future. The chairman of the NPC Standing Committee made a statement while addressing the closing ceremony of the 43rd General Assembly of the ASEAN Interparliamentary Assembly via video link. Li said China and ASEAN are good neighbors, good friends and good partners who share a common destiny. The development of China-ASEAN relations have entered a fast line with acceleration. Li stressed that the NPC of China is ready to keep conducting friendly exchanges with the ASEAN Interparliamentary Assembly and the parliaments of the ASEAN countries at all levels and through all channels and enhance solidarity and cooperation so as to make new contribution to building a closer China-ASEAN community with a shared future. New Prime Minister of Malaysia says top priority in his government is cost of living and cabinet size reduced. Malaysia's newly appointed Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim said his primary focus will be on the cost of living as he takes office with the slowing economy and country deeply split after a close election. Speaking at the news conference after reporting for duty at the Prime Minister's office, he will have a smaller cabinet than those of previous administrations. Apakah keutamaan saya sekarang ialah kos sara hidup. My priority is to address cost of living, even with positive signs, such as the strength seen for the ringgit and the stock markets, which show increased confidence in the current government. I think the priority should continue to be given to the rising cost of the living and the price of goods that are plaguing and burdening the people. Hidup harga barang yang mencekam dan menekan kehidupan rakyat. Anwar has yet to announce any cabinet appointments for his coalition government. The 75-year-old was sworn in as a premier on November 24, capping a three-decade political journey from a protege of veteran leader Mahathir Muhammad to protest leader, a prisoner convicted of sodomy, an opposition figurehead. Harvard students protest against China's COVID-19 measures. Harvard students gathered on campus in Cambridge, Massachusetts to protest China's COVID-19 measures. The protest organized by the Harvard Chinese Students and Scholars Association. Dozens of demonstrators chanted while some held up placards reading Free China and Freedom of Speech. Demonstrators in Beijing and Shanghai also took to the streets at night to protest over Chinese stringent COVID-19 restrictions. The demonstration spread to several cities in the wake of a deadly fire in the country's far west. 
The capital of the Xinjiang region triggered the protest after videos of the incident posted on the social media led to accusations that lockdowns were factor in the blaze that killed 10 people. Chinese President Xi Jinping had claimed personal responsibility for leading the war against COVID-19, justified zero COVID with the need to put people above everything and counted his correct COVID policy. Well, thank you once again for continuing watching this program and that's the end for today. Have a nice weekend, stay safe and stay healthy.